Okay, so Griffith's quantum mechanics, problem 2.18. Um, what we're going to do is show that there are two ways of writing the same thing, one of which is in terms of complex exponentials. And the other one is in terms of uh, trigonometric functions. Okay, and um, one of our goals is to find how A and B relate to C and D. So can we put A in terms of C and D, and B in terms of C and D, and can we put C and D in terms of A and B? Right. So um, to, do, to do this, we'll just need some identities real quick. Um, and the cool one is Euler's identity. Okay, this, all right, and then, um, yeah, don't ask me to prove this one, but um, we have it from Euler, so um, then we also are going to put a minus uh, theta inside of here, so And I'll go ahead and write this out. All right, now we just look real quick at the behavior of cosine and sine. Uh, uh, if you take a mirror image across the, say, the y-axis or whatever, um, the basically uh, cosine is an even function. Um, so if you go out to pi and you go out to minus pi, you'll get the same answer, same with any other number that you use, any angle. Um, so basically this is equal to, if we just put uh, the, the same angle in without the minus sign, these two are equal. Sine is the opposite case when, um, if you go out to some angle, uh, you'll get it the negative of what you would get if you went out to the negative of the angle, right? So basically, sine of sine of uh, of a negative theta is an is a, a minus of sine. So there's a minus sign here. All right, now by adding and subtracting this equation with this equation, uh, we can get uh, the um, complex exponentials in terms of uh, the, and the trigonometric functions in terms of these, right? So, So by adding these two, so I'm going to add this side, this side here. Then on this side, these two terms will cancel, cancel out because of this minus sign right here. Well, these ones you'll get a, a two cosine of theta, right? <clears throat> so basically, we can just take this two downstairs over here, and um, and now we have cosine in terms of these complex exponentials. If we want to do it the other way, and we subtract this equation from this one, uh, see right, theta minus e to the minus i theta, I have to put a line here to keep them separate. Um, then this cosine, we subtract this from this, we will get zero, um, but we'll get a two i sine side, right? Okay. So now, if we just divide by 2i, then we have a sign in terms of these things as well. All right, so that's just the background of, of this problem. We made 
not have had to, you know, if if you just start with these identities, or what you could even start with these identities, probably you can you can figure out the problem. But just some background. So um, let's just go with. Uh, we'll go ahead and write our trigonometric form. this and now we'll go ahead and put the um, uh, these two in terms of the complex exponentials from, from this from these equations up here all right so okay so we have an e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over two okay plus d e to the i oh in the yeah messed up all right in this case theta is equal to kx i should not have copied so quickly um, i k x minus e to the minus i k x all right now when we just kind of gather the, the terms here, um, we have a c over 2 plus a d over 2i. Um, and that's uh, for this e to the i kx part. And then we'll have a c over 2 minus, because of the minus sign right here, minus a d over 2i e to the minus i kx. All right, now we just look and we match these up and we say, oh, if we look at our original, you know, here's some constant complex or otherwise uh, in, um, in terms of these two complex exponentials. Uh, this one here is a this one here is B. So, doing a little bit of algebra, um, basically uh, we can just write these out. So A equals, well, let's write this out on a, yeah, we'll go ahead and write it out on a new sheet so that we have all four equations all nice together. Um, all right, so a equals, all right, so we'll bring the one half out front. We're going to uh, bring the i upstairs and we'll get a minus sign from that. So c minus i d, like this. And then uh, b equals one half on bring the, the i upstairs again, uh, get a minus sign, so we get a c plus i d. Okay? Now, um, to get these in terms of c and, to get a c and d in terms of uh, a and b, we're just going to add these equations uh, together and subtract them, kind of like what we did before. So if we add them, add the two together, um, this term will go away because of the opposite signs, okay? And if we get an a plus b equals one half c plus one half c, so c equals, so the whole c equals uh, a plus b. Okay? All right, and then d, uh, we are going to subtract a from b, so we get a, the positive Right, so we, let's see, this time the C is going to go away, and we get, uh, so one half I, um, so, the, so we do get an I, ID right here, and then we have a B minus A, all right, and so 
we can just uh, swap the i over to the other side at the expense of a minus sign. So it didn't we didn't quite get all the equations all nice, but so when we put the minus sign in here, it's just an a minus b multiplied by i, of course. So um, here are our four equations. I think we've done everything that Griffiths has asked us to do. Yep. Yeah.